This is the Horse Radio Network. This is Dressage Episode 444 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products and Total Saddle Fit. Up and coming on this show is... Chef to Keep and Chef to Mission, Robert Dover. He really doesn't need an, uh, an intro, but I can't wait. So listen in. This is Reese Koffler Stanfield from Georgetown, Kentucky. And this is Coach Jen in Ocala, Florida. And you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Woohoo! It's Girls Day. Hi, Coach Jen. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> well, obviously, I'm missing a key partner uh, on, on the show. Uh, Phil is still in Australia. He's doing great. I feel a little like Savannah Guthrie. I'm not, I'm not just kind of getting from the Today Show. I was like, where's my co-host? Where's your co-host? But Phil's good. Yeah, <laughs> Phil's good. Uh, he's doing great, having a great time in Australia. And I'm going to miss him tonight. But Coach Jen is filling in. I can't wait. I'm so happy to have you. I'm filling in. When the rock star guest <laughs> oh. gets to be here, ha, ha, ha. we have the fancy guest, and Phil's missing and it. He's Phil's gonna hate it. Serves him right yes. for going to a, such an amazing and exotic location as Australia. Ha! I know so exactly, exactly, and uh, it's going to be really fun to have Robert on. He was here at the USCF USDF convention uh, here in Lexington last week, and he did sort of a kind of the state of the union where dressage is. And he also has a fantastic campaign, the get home safe campaign, which uh, both Robert and I felt like it was really a good, good thing to have him on the show. Just as a little reminder. There we go. Um, Well, it's that season. It is that season. Lots of traveling and lots of parties. Yep. Yes, exactly. So I think it's a real important message for this week. So uh, in this month, so yeah, but Jen, we have some really, really cool stuff um, in the news today. Yeah. What's going on in the uh, dressage world, dear? Exactly. Okay. Well, Laura, we have to huge shout out to Laura Graves and Verdadis uh, or Diddy. Uh, people that are listening to the show know she's a great sp- uh, you know sponsor of our show. She comes on and she's wonderful. So her 15 year old 17 one hand Dutch warm blood gelding Verdadis, owned and ridden by Laura, won the Adequan USDF Grand Prix Horse of the Year with a median score, which is pretty amazing, of a 79.940. So her median score, yeah, she almost broke an 80%, which is pretty amazing. So a huge, huge shout out to Laura. That's pretty amazing. Um, And she's such a nice person. And I got to spend a little time with her over the weekend. So huge shout out to her. And also, uh, there was an FEI judges course held in Moscow this week, and uh, that's promotions from a three-star to a four-star FEI judge. So this is a big deal. And the U.S. attendees, and I'm pretty sure they passed, were Debbie Rodriguez and Christy Wysocki. Congratulations. So congratulations. Woo-hoo. Yeah, that's big. That's really cool that, they, that they're doing that. So, so are these judges courses, obviously, you if it's held in Russia, you do not have to be a Russian judge to attend and take your take the test. It's actually held by the FEI. So, so it's FEI. It's, it's so it doesn't matter FBI. it doesn't mm-hmm. matter what country you're from, you can attend whatever one wherever you want to go or can go. Um no, you can't just attend. You actually have to be invited at that point. You, uh, yeah, there's a whole process which, you know, I don't want to actually tell you the wrong process, but as you go through and and I think America has one of the best judges programs in the world. Uh, but after you graduate from the national judges program, you get into the FEI program. Mm. And once you're in the FEI program, um, then you're promoted. And your country, I think America had two spots to be able to promote a judge. So if they have two spots in America, promotes. So that's what happens. So then they have to go and they have to test through the FEI. So. And it, it is the FEI, therefore there are flaming hoops to jump through. Absolutely. But that, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Walking over coal, hot coals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of hoops that they have to jump through to, to get to that point, which is, so when you get that certification, it's, it's a it's really, a big deal. it's a big one. Yeah. It's a big deal. So congratulations to them. And they had to go to Russia. And, you know, typically, you know, judges really are not that well paid, you know, no, and I'm sure no. uh, I, maybe they got some funding, but really all these promotions and things that they do, they really pay for it on them on their own. Like it, it's typically not, you know, um, funded. Uh, I'm not sure about this program, but typically judges really have to put a lot of their money and time into promoting themselves and, and doing these. So, so they were not staying at the Ritz Moscow? 
Probably not. No, well, probably I'm not. sure they put it somewhere safe, I would think. But yeah, probably not. Probably the quality <laughs> in Moscow is where yeah, they were staying. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm sure. I'm sure. So, uh, but congratulations to them because that's a big deal. Yeah. That's really exciting. Woohoo. So after this commercial break, I hope you enjoy our interview with Robert Dover, chef to keep of the U.S. Olympic team. This Nutrition Minute is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products, the company that simplifies your search for research-proven nutritional supplements at kppusa.com. If you've ever had a horse with diarrhea, you know what a frustrating problem it can be. Finding an ingredient that works to dry up the diarrhea becomes a high priority. It turns out that researchers have found one, a yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii. It has been proven to improve and halt episodes of diarrhea. It supplies specific nutrients to the lining of the small and large intestines, and these nutrients promote healing of irritated tissues. It also supports improved starch and sugar digestion in the small intestine, reducing the opportunity for imbalances to occur in the hindgut. Nalox Advanced, made by Kentucky Performance Products, contains Saccharomyces boulardii, along with a blend of fermentation solubles and stomach buffers. Nalox Advanced is recommended for horses of any age that are suffering from diarrhea. It also supports a healthy digestive tract in horses at risk for gastric or colonic ulcers, such as performance horses or any horse that is constantly on the go and exposed to stressful situations. For best results, Nalox Advanced should be fed on a daily basis. This Nutritional Minute has been brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. You can find all of their terrific products at kppusa.com. Well, tonight, I really am so excited and proud that Robert Dover, our chef to keep for our U.S. Olympic team and technical advisor, also an Olympian seven times from 1984 to 2004, and has been on the World championship team and seven world cups robert welcome to the show thanks so much it's actually six olympic teams but you know what who's counting i know i'm sorry i'm telling (laughs) you what i'm like nervous i'm like doing your 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 bio and it's like oh i'm a little sweaty (laughs) no it's not a problem at all Uh, i've been around a long time that's for sure and uh, actually you know what if you include the fact that I've coached a bunch of Olympic games, you could you could actually say I've been around through, say, eight or nine of them. So it's all good. It's amazing. Well, we're so honored to have you on the show. And I got to see you here in Lexington at the USCF, USDF convention. And you did really an amazing talk. I heard it uh, in a couple of the meetings, but kind of the state of the union or state of dressage in the United States. And uh, I really was excited to have you share it the same kind of talk with our listeners. So I'll just let you take it away. Well, I'm happy to do that. Thanks so much. Yeah. You know, I, I was really thrilled to be able to be there again this year. It was actually my fourth and, uh, truly it's the last time that in my position as chef to keep and coach of our American Olympic team that I will have given the state of the sport address to the board at the uh, USDF convention, because next year will be my last year as technical advisor, chef to keep and coach of our team. And uh, so next year at this time, they'll have somebody else standing up and giving what I hope will be a great report from what I hope will be a super year in 2018. In the in 2017, we really enjoyed another very successful year. And though it in many um, people's minds is an off year 2017, what it truly is is a building year because uh, after the Olympics. You know, people think, well, budget is going to be lower and more people aren't going to be doing things. But in point of fact, we sent many, many combinations to Europe to do Nations Cups all over Europe. Mm -hmm. And our goal was to be very high up 
in the Nations Cup Series again. And in fact, we had a, a major win in Rotterdam over even the Dutch team mm-hmm. this year. We beat everyone. Mm-hmm. And in Aachen, uh, we were once again second to the Germans. And Laura actually won the Grand Prix Special mm-hmm. over Isabel Vert. Uh, with her best horse, with her top horse, by a gold, and so Diddy ended up number one, and then after that, ranked number two in the world. Um, right now, I believe, just because and only because she and all of our Americans haven't been competing, where all the Europeans have gone on competing. Laura dropped in ranking to number three in the world, but you know, in point of fact, uh, America is right now because of all of these great nations cups and all of the shows through the season, we are ranked uh, at this moment in rank in the third uh, place in the world. So the bronze place in the world in, in my estimation, watching our horses go. Uh, and, and especially I can tell you that I just did um, the last of the series of our first series of um, of training sessions with our elite riders as well as our pre-elite uh, riders in those divisions across the United States. And I am more excited and hopeful than I have ever been ever as my in my career as a rider and a coach. Wow. Um, that is so cool. I've seen more depth of great quality uh, horses and riders than ever before with absolute top world-class potential. So yeah, I'm really, really stoked over seeing uh, (laughs) over these last four days, our pre-elite, which means those horses and riders, which are averaging 70 to 73%, and I also saw the elite ones, which are those who have averaged 73 or higher. And uh, yeah, we have a, a massively amazing <laughs> group of horses and riders. And that's not even, there are more on the horizon who have just either uh, gotten horses or are just coming up into the Grand Prix and we haven't seen, but I know of already. <laughs> I just think it's going to be a great year in 2018. And that's been a huge thing um, since you took the position is helping get depth. I mean, that was one of our issues uh, and has really changed in the last several years. Also with riders going to Europe uh, and how you've taken the teams and, and you have to go to Europe and compete with the big boys. And it's it's really changed a lot in the last five years or so. I think that that what we've seen is... Uh, is a change in our programs from the bottom of the pyramid, our youth programs for both our riders, our kids, and our young horse division through the development, the developing um, Grand Prix and U25 program that Debbie oversees uh, all the way through the elite. So mm-hmm. that pro- the programs that George Williams and Charlotte Bradal Baker oversee for the kids now has developing dressage, um, and um, and that's you know with thanks to Kim Van Campen for uh, helping us to have that foundation now become the title sponsor of that program. And it gives us $1 million to work with over these next four years in sponsorship. So it allows George and Charlotte to advance that program to far greater heights. And And, and, and what I'm hoping, sorry. No, I was just going to ask like how, uh, because one of the things that I I recognized sitting in the meetings was really how approachable the coaches are in, in an appropriate way, but 
these programs are attainable. I think some people think, oh my gosh, I can never talk to George Williams or I can never talk to Charlotte. Um, but there are, there are ways and, and how do riders, you know, if you think, oh, I have a really, I have a wonderful kid and they're really stoked about dressage. How do they get involved? How is that possible? Because it, it is possible oh, to do that. Oh, absolutely. You know, George and Charlotte go all over the United okay. States doing these, what are basically talent searches and, um, and there are these clinics that go to every region in the country. And, and Charlotte and George are both incredibly passionate about identifying and then nurturing our kids from the youngest children on ponies all the way through to the U25 who are coming into that, you know, developing Grand Prix stage. Mm-hmm. And once they get to that stage, they're, they're bumped directly into Debbie's program, which then takes those U25s and, and, and they're already um, many times in Europe in the junior, the young rider division with Charlotte and, and uh, George. And we're overseeing those programs in Europe so that they can compete in Europe. And then, as I say, they're, they're being seen by not just Charlotte and George, but also by Christine, who does the young horse division. And that young horse division is part of what is that developing dressage emerging program. So this emerging program that we're calling it now is for both the kids that are going from the, the, the really the juniors and young riders through to U25, but also for the young horses that Mm -hmm. are emerging up into the from three-year-old four-year-old five-year-old then six seven eight nine-year-olds in toward grand prix and so all of these coaches are working together and and honestly i'm and i have been and will you know through the life of my career as as coach and chef to keep and and really i i don't you know just because i'm going to stop that job doesn't mean that i'm going to (laughs) leave the whole horse world altogether. Yeah. <laughs> I still, I still have a great passion and, you know, I have my thoughts of what I'll do after mm-hmm. I'm done with my job. But, um, you know, I really, uh, I see the kids along the way as well. And it, this, in this coming year, uh, the kids will probably be based with the adults when we go over to Europe because the shows are overlapping as well. Sure. And so, Robert, so, what is your, your biggest challenge in the next year for kind of the whole program? Is it fundraising? I mean, how can our listeners, uh, if you don't have a horse per se, how can they get involved with, with going well, to try on and all these horses? Yeah. Listen, fundraising obviously is always a challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, and that will always be a big part of ensuring that we have world-class programs. Our young horse program is the least funded program uh, in the in the four divisions, and we do need to figure that one out. Uh, I am determined that in 2018 we will find adequate sponsorship for Christine's program, and I'm committed to that. Um, matter of fact, I will not stop. Yeah, <laughs> that program is properly funded. I I guarantee you that. Yeah. So, um, once you, you know, once these programs are funded, and and, and it basically just, uh, it just basically works at t- annually, and and yes, we have to keep on finding more and more funding, but uh, they it really works within the budgets that we have set. And, and we're very uh, thankful that we have the USCT Foundation for our funding as well as private sponsors, obviously, and, uh, and as well as the United States Olympic Committee, which helps us. And of course, when we make medals, our funding yes. is raised. So, <laughs> you know, and then the, I guess the other challenges are just making sure that our strategies are very strong for all of our divisions when we create our strategies of how we're going to um, have the best programs for training as well as competitive programs 
for each year. So what, what we have done is we've created a roadmap. And when I uh, did my, my speech mm-hmm. in, um, in Lexington, I basically spelled out the four-year plan. And each of, in each year, I, said, I told what were the markers for that year. So in each year, we are to live up to, or actually we can do even better than the markers that we've laid out. And um, our markers for 2018 for the elite level will be to do extremely well at the World Cup in Paris in April and then to have uh, great showings throughout Europe in the Nations Cup and major CDIs throughout Europe. Mm -hmm. And then obviously to uh, first and foremost, secure a spot in the Olympics Mm -hmm. through our placement at the World Championships, which means being the top six, and then what I have as my personal hope will mm-hmm. be to be on one of those medal podiums mm-hmm. with our team. And all of us Naturally, from America supporting. Yeah, absolutely. It triumphs. Yeah, mm-hmm. 100%. I think it's yeah. going to be an amazing event. And I think it's going to, um, I think every, the American riders in all three disciplines, as well as all the other FEI disciplines, I, I think they're all going to make Americans very, very proud. That's wonderful. I, I can't wait. I'm, I, I'm, we're already here at the Horse Radio Network to cover it and, and to be a part of it. And Robert, one of the other um, important reasons you're on the show tonight is you started a campaign uh, with, with lots of other people, but you're, you're really the forefront of the Get Home Safe campaign in Wellington. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about what you've started? Well, so... This is what what happened Mm -hmm. in 2016. There had already been almost every single year, very tragic deaths, mostly of young people, but of adults as well here in Wellington. Mm -hmm. And generally they were related to drinking and driving. Um, Because of that, my good friend, and Hunter Judge and professional Tom Wright came up with an idea to have a car service here in uh, Wellington to be able to take people from the grill or from Players Club home. And at the very beginning of this, he asked Robert and myself, and we came on as sponsors to this. (laughs) Well, very quietly and without any fanfare, this car service gave 1,500 rides wow. in 2016, mm-hmm. which was great and which was mm-hmm. lovely. But, you know, as, as things happen, there's so many people, and especially young people here in Wellington, and this car service generally started once the shows started in January. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, now, two weeks ago on Saturday, mm-hmm. um, my student uh, and uh, he was he is a um, employee of Odette Shimoni mm-hmm. over at OS Dressage, Christian Kennedy, decided to you know go home with. A young lady and another young lady was sitting in the back seat, and the young lady driving was 19 years old. And they drove off, and she was going very fast down South Shore Boulevard Mm -hmm. and lost control of the car, went Mm -hmm. through the median into the palm trees on the median, Mm -hmm. and went through those palm trees across the street, and then came to a stop on the other side of the, the road on the shoulder. And both kids in the front seat were killed instantly. And the girl in the back seat um, is now paralyzed from the waist down. So this was a huge tragedy. And, Mm -hmm. you know, Christian was one of the four kids that were 
given scholarships mm-hmm. in 2017 from my Future Stars program, and mm-hmm. uh, and you know I was very, I was really proud of him, really excited. He was work, he worked so hard. I had given him a month of free training, like I gave all the kids, mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. all the other kids too. They came for a month and sort of stayed for the season and (laughs) because I, you know, I I didn't like them to leave once they were there. Mm -hmm. And then he was working so well that I talked Odette into giving him as well as Robert Mm -hmm. uh, Lewick a job. And Mm -hmm. the two boys were doing amazing. It -hmm. was really hard work for, for both of them, but really hard on Christian. Odette was, uh, is a perfectionist Mm -hmm. and, Christian was having a really hard time in the first weeks mm-hmm. and uh, and he would talk to me and he was saying, you know, maybe I'm just not good enough. And I said, Christian, keep mm-hmm. on working. Keep going, I promise buddy. you're good enough, mm-hmm. but you, you're going to have to work and mm-hmm. you've got to just listen to Odette and I'm going to help you while, mm-hmm. you know, when Odette is gone. And, and sure enough, he finally started doing better and mm-hmm. Odette started to give him the better horses mm-hmm. and Literally, just in the week uh, of that l- last week, he was riding the best horses in the barn, uh-huh. and yeah, that was the the night that he uh, went out and he was. They were celebrating, you know, a mm-hmm. good horse show, and Christian was mm-hmm. doing so well, and that was his last day of his life. So, I called Tom Wright and I said, you know, this very quiet thing that we were doing well we're not going to do it so quietly anymore Mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna do this now really loudly Mm -hmm. and of course loud is one of my better things (laughs) so 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 we we came up with a name get home safe with an exclamation mark we i i went to a place called art of life and i made i had shirts made up that are like Mm -hmm orange with green neon wording saying get home safe on them. Mm-hmm. We, um, I, we, it, we had only been doing Sunday nights cause Sunday was a big night, big night here yeah. in Wellington, but now Saturday nights have become just as big because after the freestyles, yeah. you know, yep. there's that's mm-hmm. Friday night. And that, so lots of kids go out Saturday night. Yep. Yep. And, uh, you know, Saturday night is the jumping and after that, the Grand Prix and people go out. So it's become a very big night as well. So at any rate, I'm in charge of Saturday nights and on Saturday nights, I get the car sponsors. And uh, also we have two what we call now celebrity bouncers mm-hmm. and they wear those T-shirts and they mingle around with all of the people. And mm-hmm. when anybody, kids or adults look like they're leaving and if they look even a little bit you know off or sketchy then mm-hmm. our celebrity brand bouncers kindly offer them uh, mm-hmm. a nice ride home in mm-hmm. our cars and uh mm-hmm. and in our first weekend over 100 trips were given in our cars and um so it proved to be you know obviously very successful Right. Um, so in the first weekend we had, uh, the mayor who I thought was, mm-hmm. it was great that she kicked this yeah, off. Absolutely. And so mayor Ann Gerwig and, um, TV star Carson Kressley on Saturday night, it was really great of him to, mm-hmm. you know, he had flo- flown in and, and was great of him to come out and do this cool. for us. And, uh, and then the next night, two time Olympian, Tiffany Foster, uh, and um, and Hunter Judge Bob Crandall. Wow! So, so if people want to find the car service, uh, how how do they do that? Like they look the, they, the bouncers. It's so or? simple. The yep. the bouncers are there watching and helping. But Perfect. also right in front, these cars have in green lighting, neon mm-hmm. yep. lighting in their yep. windows. Get home Good. safe. Absolutely. So it's very obvious. Very you obvious. Know, get home safe get is home lit safe. up. And it, it makes the cars extremely obvious that those are our cars. 
Perfect. Well, and I think it's just a reminder. Uh, That was also why we were talking is is how important, just a reminder for all of us going to holiday parties, not just in Wellington. It's the season, you know, get home safe, call a cab, call an Uber. Tomorrow Uh, night, I mean, sorry, tomorrow night, tomorrow's Friday, Saturday night, the the bouncers are going to be Endel Ots, and then this old guy, this old Olympian called Robert Dover. Oh, I, th- I think I think he's he's pretty cool. He's pretty amazing. Well, Robert, thank you so much for your time okay. and giving us sort of the state of dressage in the United States. It's such an exciting time, and hearing you just talk about it just makes you want to root our athletes on and, and try work even harder to become one of those elite riders. So, Robert, if if people have questions, how can they get more information about all the USEF programs? Well, they can contact. Uh, obviously, for USEF, they can go to USEF.org, and pretty much everything is there. Our matter of fact, our selection criteria for the World Equestrian Games is going to be coming out in the next couple of days, and that will be up at USEF.org. Um, if they want to know anything about high performance, they can contact Hallie Griffin at USEF.org, and if they want to contact me, they can always contact me at rdover2 at aol.com. Fantastic. Well, Robert, thank you so much for your time. You've been so busy, and I really appreciate it. Happy holidays. Well, thanks so much, Reese, and, and, and happy holidays to you and your family as well, okay? Thank you. You muck out his stall every day. You toss him hay and feed him his grain with just the right supplements mixed in. You adjust his blankets to keep him comfortable. And you always make sure he has enough fresh water. Before you ride, you brush off all the dirt and notice every bump or scratch. As you train, you feel every stride and notice each swivel of his ears as he listens to your aids. After you ride, you pause for a hug, because your relationship is what it's really all about. The feeling you get when you hug your horse is priceless. It's why we do what we do at Kentucky Performance Products. This feeling is brought to you by Nalox Advanced. Fight back against colic and digestive upset. Nalox Advanced provides a scientifically advanced blend of ingredients that work synergistically to maintain your horse's digestive tract in peak condition. The horse that matters to you matters to us. Well, you've got a really cool list for us. I do. It's the holiday season. So I thought it would be really fun to look at a Christmas gift list. And what I found is 10 DIY holiday gifts for horse people. And what we're going to do is I'm going to read these to you, Reese, and we're going to decide whether or not, A, you would make this gift for someone. Okay, okay. B, whether you would want to get this gift that somebody made for you. Okay. Or C, is it just stupid? <laughs> is it just lame? Is, this, is it just like, lame? Yeah, literally. I like, okay, okay. Well, you know, I got a little crafty side to me. You, you know, do. We did the ribbon wreath a couple years ago. So that's right. I mean, that was like, I think one of my shared, most shared items on Facebook was this ribbon wreath. So I do actually like to get a little crafty when yeah. I have time. So As a matter of fact, I think I, Glenn shared that picture again very recently. I know. Yeah. And everybody wants to know how to make those bad boys. So every year I have to like add to one. I have a couple I need to add to this year. So yeah, they're really cool. All right. This one is from uh, budgetequestrian.com. 10 DIY Christmas gifts for equestrians. First one. Homemade horse treats. Oh, that's a win. Ding, 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 win. Absolutely. Win. And I, I actually, my niece and I are going to make some treats. So God knows how much will actually make it into a treat form and not on me or on her or in her mouth, but we're going to give it a shot. <laughs> yes. So that's a win. Would make win. these or would love to get yes. them. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Excellent idea. And there are a million and one horse treat recipes online. Yeah. So there you go. Well, maybe for next next week we'll find one we like and we'll yes. we'll bring it on. I I found one. It's on I don't know how to cook dot com, and <laughs> I like it. Yeah, and all you have to do is buy a five pound bag of carrots, okay, and a large kitchen knife and cut into one inch inch sections. Put in okay. a holiday themed Ziploc bag. Put the name on the front, and you're ready to go. <laughs> 
I like it. I like it. Go. Very cool. You can even put it on a tray. You can put it on a tray if you want to get really fancy. fancy. You can, you can yeah, cut them. Really you can cut them at a diagonal if you want to get really. Smart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cut it at a diagonal. Just don't cut your finger. Just do not. Yeah. Take your finger. Yeah. Uh -huh. All I right. Like I like it. Very yeah, cool. There you go. So number two, how about this one? A personalized stall plaque. Oh yeah, love it. Love it. Everybody needs that. Everybody needs that. There's nothing more fun than putting an adorable stall plaque on the horse's yeah, stall front with his name on so, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you can decorate it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm on it. Yeah. Yes. These are great gifts for boarding barns. Oh, yeah. Because you make them or for everybody. Yeah. You can get them that you can take them to horse shows. So we actually, we do that. We hang them on our lockers and then we take them to the horse shows. Oh, oh that's a good really idea nice for the tack and... lockers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another good idea. Yeah. So another. I like an, it. That's a win. Another winner. Wow. I need a, yeah. I need a bell. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> How about this one? Oh, this is going to be a tougher one. A homemade custom bridal rack. Uh, well, like my brother-in-law is super crafty with wood. So, it, it, yeah, I would take it from him. I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. This Can is I one I would it? love to get. I don't know if I would take on making it. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't make it. <laughs> it. It requires wood tools, which I especially a saw, I try to stay very far away from those items. Yeah, power but tools. If you could do it, I would love to get it. Yes, I would love to get one of those too, because I yeah. always have way more bits of leather in my tack room than I have places to hang them, yeah. so they end up on nails, and I have a lot of, unfortunately, I have a lot of tuna fish cans attached to the walls of my tack room. Really? Not stylish tuna fish cans. You, you just put the bridle on the tuna fish can? Yeah, you take the tuna fish can when it's empty and you wash it out and you tack a nail through the back of it and hang your stuff on it. I have never seen that. That's pretty You're cool. You're kidding me. <laughs> I have never heard of said thing. That's awesome. I thought right, everybody that's knew a, about that's the tuna a fish win can. right yeah, there. It's a I, win. It's not pretty, but it gets the job cans. done. Winner. Winner. There we go. So there we go. Not as a gift, but as a practical solution. The tuna a fish can. A practical candy. solution to the problem. I love it. Winner. All right. So we have... Uh, Two wins and one eh, plausible. Yeah, 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 maybe. Uh -huh. So number four, how about a handcrafted wooden grooming to tote? You know those really neat ones that yeah. you see at the ringside? Oh, yeah. Yes, I take that. Ding, ding. I like it. Take that. Absolutely. I want you to make that yeah, for me. Yeah, you could put your nameplate on it. Oh, you can take it and yeah. put the names on it. Yes, yeah. good idea. And then, you know, when you get a new horse, you can put another nameplate on it. So then it becomes like a... <gasps> A memorial or a yeah, play, like, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I like that. Good idea. See, good thinking. So not only do you have the wooden, wooden grooming tote, or if you're not that crafty, buy the wooden grooming tote and then have the plates made. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I can paint the wooden grooming tote. I just can't make it. I can do that because so. I can be so yeah, I can be sufficiently totally that, Jen. Yeah, I can be sufficiently crafty that I can go to the tax store and order yeah. name plates. Me too. That's how crafty I can do that. I am. Paint it. You can paint it. I could paint it. Yes, I can do that. <laughs> How about number five? Um, boot trees made with socks. Mm. 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 Not sounding enthusiastic. Not getting a real good visual of this. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna stick away from those. This this is um this is an yeah. easy DIY. You take a pair of boot socks and you cut a piece of a pool noodle the height of the boot and you slide the boot sock over top of it and then tie the top closed with a pretty ribbon. Well, it's kind of a good idea. That's a maybe. It's a maybe. Yeah. I mean, I could, I, I could do that and it could go badly. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah I would probably take the sock off and use the socks. Or yeah. have you ever shown up to the barn and forgot your socks? I have done this. And you know, like when I was in school and I would come from school you wouldn't have to worry because you, you had boot trees, boot socks. <gasps> Dang, you're right. For so for the yeah. forgetful traveling horseman in yes. your life, this is a very yes. good idea. And then you could put the socks back on. You have backup socks. The boot tree, and then you knew you always had socks. So Dang. there's something to be said about that. So mm -hmm. this is plausible. That's plausible. Okay. Yeah. That's in the it's in a maybe. It's category. in a maybe category. All right. Especially if they were really cute socks. Yeah. So moving right along with our 10 DIY Christmas gifts for horse people from budgetequestrian.com. Number six, a boot hanger. Oh, as in horse's leg boots. Oh, yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah, because everybody, well, use, everybody uses boots I mean, on their horses now. I think you could go to the dollar store and get, you know, like what you hang shoes in. 
We did that <gasps> someplace I worked, and it was yeah. great. And so you put the boots, you put the name of the horse on on the, you know, the mm-hmm. shoe racks yeah. behind the door. Mm-hmm. They were great. Is that what they're talking about? Now, this one, they took one one by six pine lumber. Uh-oh. May, may, may involve power tools again. Wood. Painted yeah. them and yeah. sanded the edges to give it a worn appearance. Then I added Velcro. Mm. And oh, oh, what they did is they just took bits of little thin strips of wood. They painted them all mm-hmm. cute and put the horse's name on them. And then they put a strip of Velcro along the bottom edge of it because everybody knows all horse boots have Velcro on them now. So that when yes. you hang them up, you just stick them up there with the piece of Velcro that's already on the boot. Oh. Yeah. I love the concept. I'm not, sh- I'm not, yeah. um, I'm not sold on the execution. I kind of uh, like your yeah. idea better. Oh, yeah. That's the best way to do it. It's awesome. You've been doing your trailer too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm liking that. And if you wanted mm-hmm. to, get clever with it you could get you can get the really nicer well really nice ikea you can get nicer ones from ikea and then you could use uh, fabric paint and put the yeah. name on the top yeah that'd be oh yeah cool. you could go yeah you could do yeah 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 for sure all right yeah. so boot mine should be on the list boot storage device made from a shoe tree good idea good idea yeah. there you go so we altered that one just a little bit <laughs> all right number seven horsey christmas tree ornaments oh that's a given yeah but yeah, but I really, if I give an ornament out, it's really going to be a special ornament. So I'm not, I'm not clever enough. Any, any homemade Christmas ornament I made would come yeah. out looking like something that came yeah. from third grade. So yeah. I would love to get someone that's one that someone made for me, but I definitely will not be making them. I agree completely with that. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. You have to have a certain that's skill set. To crafty. Make these. Yeah. Yeah. It's too crafty for me. Too crafty. Oh, and this one's a little creepy. It's, it makes the rounds every yeah. year. A horse head Christmas wreath, which is basically just green stuff shaped like a horse head. Oh, I got one of those tomorrow, yesterday, and it's lovely. It's cool. Ah, oh, see the picture they have here. It's really dorky oh. looking. Oh, I'll send you a picture of the one I got. It's really cute. Yeah, it's okay. cute. So, okay, that could that could be good or bad. Yeah. So this one falls into the same category as homemade Christmas tree ornaments. Yeah, lovely to, to get, to do it. but you really have to have the right skill set in order to make it for someone. Okay. That's fair. That. That's oh, fair. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and now number nine, we're moving into the spa department. Oh, yeah. Authentic sheepskin grooming tools. To make them. Oh, yeah. Boy. How do you make That's, them? See, I don't know. Buy authentic sheepskin. Good. Cut it into circles. Well, there. You stitch on a hand strap. Oh. Well, I could, could do that. I could do that. I could I could do that. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. You, you make yeah. it into a big old circle about, about the size of a curry comb. And then you use a piece of gross grain ribbon or lightweight elastic and stitch it onto the back. Because if a, a decent needle that you can buy at any sewing store will go through the hide. And you can make cute little grooming things. Oh, that's a cute idea. That's a really cute idea. Like the win. That's a winner. Win. win, win, win. There we that's go. A winner. Nigel loves having his face rubbed with sheepskin because he yes. has one. He thinks that's lovely. Oh, I think it's nice too. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And number 10 may not necessarily appeal to 100% of this audience, but homemade horse jumps. How about homemade dressage letters? That would be good too. Yeah. But you know, I mean, dressage people, we jump every once in a while. I mean, you know, there's some jumping ish. Jumping ish. But for sure, Cavalettis. Absolutely, I mean, Cavaletti. Cavalettis are a good. For sure, because jumpers need that, dressage riders need that. Everybody needs that. I like that. the Cavaletti's yeah. And I, yeah, and Cavaletti are, cause, because Cavaletti, from my point of view, a Cavaletti just keeps that pole from rolling away. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they don't have to be high. They don't have to be high. And I, I'm sure you can find stuff online. They're not that hard to make, I'm sure. So, mm-hmm. And there's 101 yeah. variations nowadays. It used to be it had to be that big X. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And there's a lot of variations. I still have now. those. Yeah. yeah, you still have them. And we, st- oh, and it was so frustrating because they would start to get a little bit wobbly, and then they, they would yes. tip, and then yeah. But we used to have some that the the rail and the piece that held the rail up off the ground were not permanently attached to, to one another. They were oh. two separate pieces. And basically, all it was was a six by six piece of wood, and by that yeah. you're at Lowe's. And they were sliced into 12-inch sections. And then there was a V cut out in the middle. And the V was there the exact go. same depth as the diameter of the rail, four inches. So it laid in there and was perfectly flat. And it got it 
three or four inches off the ground, which is what I needed for a ground pole. It was very secure, but it, it yeah. my ground pole could still be a jump rail. Uh, it, see, I didn't have to have extra poles because if you have them permanently attached, that pole can no longer be a jump rail. It has to be a Cavaletti all the time. Um, yeah, so we use these, and that way you just drop them in there. You could use one or two, and if you wanted to make them into jumps, which is what you can do with your old-fashioned X ones, you can stack them up and make them into jumps. Yeah, yeah you could yeah. do that with these because the V was the right uh, depth, so that these blocks, these six by six blocks, could be stacked to top one another and made into little jumps. Really? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it was that's very really cool. Here we go. Ah, so very cool. I like it. it. That's that's a win winner right there. That's a winner right there. So that's it. That is the uh, ten DIY Christmas gifts for equestrians from budgetequestrian.com. Now ah, that, was that we've fine. gone through the yeah. DIYs. Are any of those items on your Christmas list before we talked about them? No. No. <laughs> Well, like I said, I, I do have plans for horse treats with my niece, so that'll be super So fun. one of them was. Um, it was on your giving list. Yeah. Yeah, my giving list. That's always really fun. Um, yeah, you know, I honestly, I, this Christmas, I asked for something not horsey. Really? Actually. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, I mean, there's a package that arrived that I think I know what it is. I'm just saying. <laughs> but um, but I, I'll, I'll spill it to you guys. Um, so I really like archery. Uh, really I'm not very good at archery, but I have I enjoyed it when I was young, and there's a p- piece on the property that is really fun to set up um, targets. So I asked for a bow. I don't want to kill anything. I just want to practice the sport of archery. So 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 is, is our is our dressage gal going to take up uh, mounted archery, and you're going to have? Well, I don't think any of my horses are going anywhere close to my bow. That and could be Denali's me, calling. It yeah, could. If, if, you, if you've seen my skill level, which is awful, no, not anytime soon. <laughs> but uh, I really enjoy My nephew really likes to do it, to shoot, and my brother-in-law. So uh, I have a coach, and I have. Uh, and the good thing is my nephew will run anywhere my bows, go, my um, arrows go. Oh, so you have a retriever. There you He's go. a great retriever, and <laughs> I should probably retrieve for the physical aspect of what we're doing, but he just loves to retrieve and I'm not very accurate. So he has to run out, but it's really cool. So I think we're actually going to kind of um, make a little, little archery area. So I'm very novice here and, and it's kind of fun to do something not horsey. So that's actually what I want for Christmas. I is, would is a never bow. in a million years have guessed archery. How cool is that? No, no, I did it at camp as a kid and, and I, I, you know, I'm just, I'm not going to brag, but. Yeah, I was not archery word when I was dead. So oh, I feel like it, it instilled. Yeah, it instilled this kind. Of, yeah, but I'm. I'm. You know, I've only gone shooting a couple times, and and it was just really fun. So I think we're gonna do that. So. This week's dressage training tip is brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, home of the shoulder relief girth at totalsaddlefit.com. So, as per is my habit when I am on the dressage <laughs> radio when show, you're on our show. <laughs> whenever I'm on the show, I always get to provide the tip because I dig yes. through my my volumes and volumes of saved questions that I get from listeners, mm-hmm. and I always find, try to find one to trip you guys up. So let's <laughs> well, see how me, I do. So take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> so this one comes from Anne Marie. I have a former show hunter who is very, in capital letters, light-mouthed. He prefers to go behind the bit and avoid all contact. What can I do to encourage him to reach for the contact? He will stretch down, but as soon as I ask for contact again, it all goes pear-shaped. I like that. I like that description because that, <laughs> that really makes it makes it. So this is actually something I work with a lot because this happens a lot with thoroughbreds. And oh, kind of yeah. Off Lexington. the track horses mm-hmm. that have been had their mouths not particularly well developed. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Jen, that's exactly right. I mean, I think a lot of this is a, is a lack of education on several fronts. So um, the first thing I say when a horse is super light in the mouth is exactly like I'm going to evaluate how that horse's contact is and how cultured slash educated that horse is 
because if it's a racehorse, it's going to have a different set of steering and education for contact. So um, I like to think with these horses, I want to make sure that they properly understand connection on the lunge line as well as under Uh saddle. So I think, yeah, you know, lunging is not just for running a horse around in the circle. Um, That's super important. It's a great way to educate a horse like this about contact because a lot of times the horse doesn't understand to connect the hind leg through the rider to the bit. He doesn't understand that that's, that's a, that's a thing, right? That yes, exactly. They don't know it forward. exists. <laughs> right. They have no idea that that exists. So I, I think it's really important, you know, once you, now this is not the first time you've put a horse on the lunge line, right? The horse has to be educated about lunging. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I will gently start with some side reins and asking this horse to push forward to the bit. Um, and I, and I actually call it good, strong, um, I think that's important for people. No, I don't want the horse to pull, but I want the horse to essentially take a hold of my hand. Um, and, and kind of, you know, if you're leading a young kid along and, and you kind of take their hand, you say, hey, come here, come, let's go over here. That's what I, that's the feeling, right? I don't want to hurt their mouth. I don't want them to get a strong in the mouth, but I want them to learn to take the bit. So yeah, I think, I think that's, that's really a really important. good way to explain the feel is mm-hmm. if you're holding someone's hand, Mm-hmm. And you're holding one another's hand mm-hmm. versus you grab a hold of somebody's hand and drag them somewhere or right. they grab your hand and drag yeah. you somewhere. You're holding someone's hand and they're right. holding yours back. That's the sort of feel you get. That's an excellent That's way right. to explain that. Very good. Well, hey, you know, I do, that's my day it's job. It's like you've done this before. It's <laughs> my day job. I've done this before. But that's a real common misconception with contact, right? So when the horse is dropping behind the bit, it's essentially not holding your hand, right? It's it keeps dropping your hand. There's no there's no contact or consistency between. So that's the first thing. I don't actually care if that horse is on the bit is, or its nose is at the vertical. That doesn't matter to me. I want them to learn to take a hold of my hand, not rip my hand out of the socket, but take a hold of my hand. So I think that's really important. And I do that by adding in some forward and back transitions, right? That the horse, you know, learns that I'm going to push you forward to the bit and I'm going to bring you back kind of like an accordion, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to bring you out and I'm going to push you back in. So, um, it's very normal when a horse falls behind the bit. I, I would almost bet that horse is behind the leg as well because everything ah. happens behind you. Yeah. So that would be one of the first things that I would check if you were in the ring with me is can you put your leg on and will that horse just chop forward or move forward? And once you sort of get that, then the horse will start to take some contact in the mouth and then you get something to work with. So kind of a two-prong approach. You know, obviously there's a riding component where you have to push that horse to the bit. And then there's a lunging component, which I think work together. Some days I'm going to lunge that horse. Some days I'm going to lunge that horse and ride that horse. But if the horse can't get it on the lunge line, it is not going to get it under saddle. Very that makes sense. interesting. I like, I like mm-hmm. your, the way you're coming at this because mm-hmm. when the horse is properly lunged, you are taking mm-hmm. out the variable of the rider not giving the appropriate right. cues or getting in a, in the way of the cues, right. and you are helping to lessen the variable of the rider's leg in that mm-hmm. it is much easier to send a horse forward on a lunge line mm-hmm. than it is from on his back. It's, it's hard to find a horse that won't move forward on a lunge line. Right. right. And, and, and we don't want running, right? Right. That's, we want controlled but for a lunging. horse who maybe is um not tuned into the leg or is used to going behind the leg and being a little uh backed off who is very comfortable in that shape and that mindset it's going to mm-hmm. be easier for him to be sent forward on a lunge line now for someone who's who's going to take this approach mm-hmm. what do appropriate side reins look like when we get started with this process are they are they how long or short would they be well and it, and that depends on sort of the level of education with the horse right well, if he I was mean, a, I don't, let's we're gonna say he's gonna be in the training level area because he's a show yeah hunter. right so the training level area you know training level asks for a level balance right so that's what you look at when you attach the side reins so when I first put side reins on they're super loose you know, and the horse learns to sort of go around with the loose side rein. And then as we go along, just the easiest way to describe it on, on the show is 
you know, when you look at that horse, does it, does he look like he's in a training level frame? Does gotcha. that make sense? Yes. So, you know, I'm going to go a mid, mid level side rein. If it's completely loose, you know, again, let's say we've already been through the loose side reins. We've gone to where you can take a little bit more contact. You want to see just a level balance, right? Because that horse is going to struggle even at a level balance. It's yes. going to want to fall behind the bit. Yes. And that's where the whip, not chasing the horse, but again, properly pointed toward the point of the hip, that the whip is going to act as a driving aid. And it's going to drive the horse into the connection, right? So if that horse is inverted, this is the other way, the horse is going around with his head inverted, they will eventually feel the pressure and come down. Now, if the horse is falling behind the bit in the side reins, you have to teach the horse to move from behind to the bit. And that's what you're doing with your whip. And obviously, if he's running around that's not what we're talking about either, right. but we're driving that horse forward and he has to learn, you know, to then maybe even take a little half halt and come back and not run. So um, I think that's, that's an, an important um, type of education for horses is, is that lunging. So there you important. go. And then, lunging and riding. Lunging you know, and you're riding, doing yeah. it. You're doing it also the same concept. So when you ride that horse and he's falling behind, you know, the ideal is that you can keep your arms very steady, just like side reins. (gasps) You're mirroring the side rein, right? So if that horse is falling behind, you use your legs to drive the horse forward and push it to your hands. And, um, so you're trying to mirror each other. Yes. You're using them in tandem. Yeah. Yes. That makes perfect sense. You're Mm -hmm. asking for the same result using two different approaches and that's going to give the horse the best opportunity to get it right and this yeah. doesn't sound like it's an instant fix this sounds like no. something that's a process to teach exactly. the horse exactly that's kind of a process you know yeah. that's that's you've got to say that's going to minimum i would say you know a month six weeks um, you've got to you've got to work on that so. there we go yeah. well not a quick fix thank you but, very much but a Anne doable Marie. fix yeah yes thank it's you fixable. Marie. appreciate it yay let us know t- uh, touch base remember we always like facebook and email shout outs there we go. Uh, and we want to hear how it goes there we go. And I want to put on at this point because Total Saddle Fit helps us provide this training tip each month, each week. Um, one of the things that we're always concerned about when we're dealing with our horses is making sure that their tack fits well and mm-hmm. is comfortable because mm-hmm. all sorts of issues can arise if it doesn't. You got it. And one of the ways <laughs> we do that is Total Saddle Fit Girth. How many different horses in your barn wear a Total Saddle Fit Girth? All of them. <laughs> That's a bad radio answer. You're, we're never supposed to give one word answers, but that's true. All of them. And, and we have all different variables, right? We have the original total saddle fit. And then I have a couple horses. Um, interestingly enough, the, the elastic, um, the total saddle fit with the elastic. Um, I have found that with horses that are growing and are really having to learn how to lift up their sternum and lift up their rib cage and, and, their, and their tummies, mm-hmm. um, they can get sore there. And oh, that girl, yeah. Great helps them that's a really helpful girth for those horses um so we use that and then um i also have um the synthetic girth that we use so i use them all and it sort of depends on um you know justin's been very generous and and let us try out all of them and i like them all for various reasons and different horses so um if i don't if one doesn't fit right or or it's the wrong size i just use the other one so i we use them all philip and i truly use this product every day on every single horse that we have in the barn and um they hold up well. Uh, Justin's great with questions. That's Justin at totalsaddlefit.com. And um, it's really easy to use this product and uh, really makes sense. So, uh, again, if you have any questions, Justin at totalsaddlefit.com. And he can help you. And they're all price points. And the other thing is um, they he has uh, changeable fleece covers and super easy. So, Justin makes it very, very simple. So, I hope that helps. There we go. So there's there's a total saddle fit shoulder relief girth for mm-hmm. every horse. Yeah, there is. There for we go. Sure. Thanks a yeah, bunch. Total saddle fit and the shoulder relief girth. Well, everybody, you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website, dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook, just search Dressage Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. 
My website is maplecrestfarmky.com and my email is reese at horseradionetwork.com. If you want to get a hold of Philip, his email is philip at horseradionetwork.com. Want to thanks to, say a big thanks to our sponsors for today's show. And don't forget to check out all the other shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Everybody, keep your heels down and your shoulders back, and Phil will be back with some stories next week.